right, three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the episode of the Jet I'm Eric Christie Elder. You know I'm from Bonnie and Clyde, Mary Poppins, Grey Garden. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Glad to be here. So tell us about your background. My background. Okay, well I am an actress here primarily in New York, but I would love to at some point expand to LA like my brother has. I started acting when I was seven years old in community theater and started acting professionally when I was ten years old here in New York on Broadway and have uh, been pretty pretty much acting ever since professionally. I did a lot of community theater shows, but because I started doing professional theater at such a young age, I didn't really have the chance to do school plays because I was, you know, every day after school I was coming up to New York City, and then I was doing stuff here, and then I was going home and had just enough time to like go to sleep, get, get dinner, do homework. Yeah, I didn't really have time for any other shows. But I did when I was a senior in high school. I had been working consistently on Broadway for five years and things were just um, slowing down a little bit. So I was able to do my, uh, my, I think it was my junior year, I did Sandy in Greece at my high school. So that was probably one of the only school shows that I ever did. Uh, you made your uh, debut in Grey Garden. I did. With Christine Ebertor yeah. in the world and yeah. right now. Did it ever get as an actor? Did that make you a better actor? That's a really great question. I think so, for sure. I think just the whole, just being in that kind of professional environment because it was my Broadway debut, I've never done anything like that before, you know? So I think just being surrounded by actors of that caliber, including Christine Ebersol and Mary Louise Wilson, um, was just an honor. And I also was 10 years old, so I don't know how much I was actually like, you know, observing their acting and their techniques and all that. Because I was like, you know, more concerned with High School Musical and <laughs> things like that. But, but looking back, and I got to see Christine in War Paint, and I said, you know, hello afterwards. And just kind of looking back to what she did in that show and, and watching her in War Paint now, it's just, you know, I, I go, oh my gosh, I wish I had known what I was kind of surrounded with when I was 10 years old. But what can you expect from a 10 year old, you know? You were in Mary Poppins with a buttload of my friends. <laughs> I live in a buttload. Really? Uh, like, Tia and Stephanie. Yes! And Gavin. You know Gavin too? Yes. Oh my goodness, you know everybody. <laughs> and it was at the... Um, the New Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. Where I speak with very often. You do? Uh, uh, I go there so often that they need to... Keep an extra lamp for me <laughs> so I can get up backstage no to get into the elevator That's so great. I can say hi to everybody. Yeah, because there are those steps that go down before you get to the elevator and go up. Yeah. Yeah, wow. you played um, Jane back on Broadway. I did. And the tour. Yeah, you did. Your role changed in any way from, did, from Broadway to tour. Yeah. Like, yes. Did they change anything? Take anything out? Expand any? Yeah. So when I so I started on Broadway because the tour hadn't even opened yet. This I did Mary Poppins for two and a half years. So part of that, most of that was Broadway, but probably about four to five months of that was tour. And so I, um, when I went out to tour, I was like, oh, it's the same show. Like, how different can it be, right? It was yeah. totally different. I mean, it, it was it was the same show, and you know, 
pretty much everything yeah, is the same. Yeah, we on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, he flipped on the ceiling on Broadway and on tour. Yeah, yeah. They managed to do it pretty much everywhere. Yeah. So, anyway, we, um, when I went to tour, it was, like I said, same show, same story, but little, just the smallest things were different. Like, it would be a, a the instead of an a, uh, like in the script and in lines. So there were little things that I had to, like, fix in my head between what was Broadway and what was tour. And not only that, but the sets were totally, totally different. So all of the on-stage choreography and all of the backstage choreography, which is just as important and as um, crucial as the on-stage choreography, pretty much all of it was different and I had to like relearn it. Um, so, and what would happen too is I would, it wasn't like I did Broadway and then tour and that was it. I would do Broadway tour, Broadway tour, Broadway tour, Broadway tour. I went on tour probably like four or five times. So I, at some point I kind of got into a rhythm of like what was Broadway, what was tour. But in, at first it was really hard. Jane Banks, I played Jane Banks. Yeah, Jane Banks. Yeah. The little I was, when I was in Mary Poppins, I was 11 to 13. So you didn't travel a lot. No, no. But because my mom had Micah, um, you know, who definitely, especially at that age, he was around probably nine, wow. ten. Yeah. Well, no, because we're only eighteen months apart. So Micah was just a little bit younger than I was, but he still needed a lot of assistance. So he, my mom would stay home with him. She she told them that you know we I couldn't go on tour to start with when they asked. They were my mom was like, no, we can't go on tour. Sorry, ask someone else. And they were like, no, we want Kelsey. And um, she was like, I don't see how we could do this. And they were like, what would it take to make it possible? So my mom was like, okay, we'll figure it out. And she actually had a couple of good friends on tour that we had met. I forget how we met them, but I wound up staying with them for a lot of the time. And my mom would come out and visit every now and then just because she needed to be home with Micah. Um, so I would stay with, with friends on tour alone. I was, I was like 11 or 12 and sometimes I wouldn't see my family for, you know, three or four weeks. And it was crazy. <laughs> what about schooling? I would be tutored. So anytime you're doing a show, when you're in rehearsals as a kid, you are you can't be in school because it's eight hours a day rehearsal, sometimes even more. So you're tutored and uh, on tour it's the same case for any kids touring the country. There's a tutor who travels with the show. Interesting. Yeah. Um, now, you have been in Bunny Life with Laura Alvin, we is coming on the August 15th. She's coming on your show? Yeah, no August 15th. Oh, I'm going to have to talk to her. I'll have to pop in. I'll say hi. I'll be like, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, we're great, great friends. She's I've, incredible. I've been waiting for the sit down for 10 years. Oh my gosh. Because every time that I put in for it, it's either running to dinner or, you know, it got to be a quick high. Right. So it ain't me if I can do it while she's signing. There you go. While she's signing autographs? Yeah. There you go. And I usually do it, but this time, and I was sit down. He had seen her really in everything. Yeah. Since she was in the contest yeah. to win, yeah. we actually yeah. voted for her. Yeah, when I was in Grey Gardens, um, she was doing, she was on, you know, Grace is the one that, you're the one that I want, and I was watching, and we would race home from Grey Gardens at the city so that we could catch it, because it was Sunday nights, and Sunday we would only have matinees. So we'd get out of the show here at like six, and I would we'd run to the bus so we could get home by eight to watch it, and we would vote for her every single time. And when I met Laura, she was probably about two years older than I am now, and so I've known Laura for a very long time. I was, I don't know, I must have been like thirteen, maybe maybe younger when I met her, probably twelve. I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I would sit down. That's awesome. What I've been waiting for in years. That's awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. That's going to be great. So you played young Laura. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was that like? Well, it was really awesome. I mean, when Laura 
was doing Bonnie and Clyde, she she wasn't quite yet Laura Osnes. You know, she had won um, Greece and she had done South Pacific, but it, I think I think Bonnie and Clyde is one of the things that really kind of launched her career in a way, as well as Cinderella and everything she's done since. But it was really cool because it was a role for her that was totally totally different than anything she'd done before, and I got to sort of be a little part of that, and I got to portray her in a sense, but I also got to show the audience um, the contrast between Bonnie as an adult and who she became, you know, who the world knows her to be, and Bonnie as, you know, a kid. And and nobody nobody thinks of, of someone who's as notorious as Bonnie and Clyde, you know, when they were kids. People don't think like that. So it's cool to be able to give a glimpse of, you know, what she might have been like yeah, to the world. And that was a very cool one. Yes, it was a very short run. We um, we did. So, Bonnie and Clyde was um, open for only a month, and I had been with the show. Laura, myself, and the man who played the preacher, his name is Michael. We are the only three who had been with the show for the entire process. So we did the very first reading all the way to opening night and closing night of Broadway. So. It was heartbreaking when we closed after a month because we all had believed in the show so much. I poured three years of my life into it, so I was, you know, it was devastating. But to kind of see the life that it's taken on after, you know, I kind of thought, well, that's it. You know, nobody, we did this thing and nobody's ever going to really get to know about it or hear about it because we were only open for such a short amount of time. But then we were able to make a cast album and, and now I, I did Mary Poppins for two and a half years. And Bonnie and Clyde is the people thing will, the thing people will recognize me on the street for. It's hilarious. You didn't get to see it. Have you listened to it at all? No. No? Well, you've got to listen to it. I will. Okay. But, um, I think you'd like it. Yeah. yeah I like anything. No other. Yeah. Do. I agree. It's a funny I go to the Pacific three times because Kelly O'Ever was in it. And she's like, I love her. She's like, my number one really? boy. Uh, and now, three years later, we are best friends. Uh, best friends. That's amazing. I wouldn't get that thing for the hit that night. That's awesome. And he gave me a Tony pin. Because he, he has seven and he only keeps it in a junk drawer. Uh, yeah, well she's been nominated so many times, but it's ex that's so and exciting. I, I am one of them. Uh, That's amazing. Anyway, so, so other, it wasn't very popular that the woman was in it. So I get there, I asked for Kelly to come out at the same door before the show. And they're like, um, Kelly is not here. You know what the music is. I earn a mug and go under the earth believe me. <laughs> and they say, the woman's on, the woman has me. I'm like, mom, we're saying, the woman's on. And now, Let's talk about your brother. Yeah. We have to. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, what do you want to know? Um, do you, uh, you, you ever are on the show? Am I ever on the show? Yeah. I have, I have yet to make an appearance. Although, <laughs> some of my artwork has. There is, <laughs> so when I was out there last summer, so pretty much I kind of 
I guess like I go out at certain points in the year because I have you know time off of school. So I went out there last summer and I painted a, a school poster for I think it was like Spirit Week on the show and there was like a twin day happening and I was like oh I'm I'm bored like I'll help you guys paint because it was all these you know burly guys who do sets. They were like with paint brushes in the hall <laughs> painting signs and I was like I'll help you guys and I made this beautiful piece of art and it was hung on the wall and I didn't even get to see it in the episode I like the whole time I was like where is it and I don't I don't think it I'm not sure if it really made it in or not but I did it I would love to be on the show one day no I don't have it but I think somewhere I have a picture of it somewhere you don't know what coming up with season two. Micah doesn't know what, nobody knows yet. The writers are, are hard at work writing. We know that JJ, you know, he goes to camp and then yeah. we don't know what's happening from there. But I, I can't yeah. imagine, you know, it's going to be incredible. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what your favorite movie, you know? Oh, that is such a hard question. I mean, it changes all the time. Obviously, Speechless is like the top of the list. But besides that, I love like crime shows. I love NCIS. I love superhero stuff like Smallville. Um, I know it's not running now, but my brother and I, long before he booked Speechless, but we started watching it together because it's a they're 40 minute episodes and there's 10 seasons of that show. We started watching it together when I was probably a sophomore in high school. And we didn't finish until uh, probably last summer, right before he left for, for Speechless. So it took us a long time, but we refused to watch episodes if we weren't together. So, yeah, that's probably one of my favorites as well, though. <laughs> no. If you could pick a role of Broadway for it that you would like to do. Gosh, okay, there's there's quite a few. And a lot of them are shows that I've done because, you know, they're, they, you grow an attachment to them, but one would be, a dream of mine is to, you know, when Bonnie and Clyde is revived, to play adult no. Bonnie. Yeah, to play, you know, Bonnie. I think that would be so much fun. And I think it would be like, you know, really cool. Like young Bonnie plays Bonnie. Um, and I would love to do like, you know, Maria and The Sound of Music. And I like classic roles. I like things that are a little, a little more daring and exciting. I have so many, it's so hard. Like Elphaba would be fun. Lots, lots of dream roles. Um, does Micah album at the wedding to do a play on Broadway? I don't think so. <laughs> he used to do community theater with me when no, I was little. Like a play, not, a not a musical. I still, I don't know. Like he used to do shows with me when we did community theater. I was probably like seven, he was maybe six. And he didn't really like the stage as much as he likes being on a set. You know, I think I, I, I think he likes television. I, How would you go I, get involved in theater once? Well, I just, my mom took me to see a community theater show and I like apparently was trying to hop on stage the whole time, she says, and um, she got me involved and said, hey, why not? Like, Michael, let's get you to do it too. And he did two shows with me. And he was like, after that, he was like, eh. You know, he was, he was like six or seven, so he was interested in other things. Yeah, I what? Oh yeah, I do too. I do too. Yeah. Although my my love for I'm, TV has grown since my I'm, kids I'm not, not I'm not like you. I'm more of a character. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm a character. Yeah, I love that. In no way. <laughs> And I'm a triple threat. Uh -huh. I'm more of a character actor. Sure. You know, like Harvey and Marty Good. I play more character driven. Sure, yeah. Uh, then I do things, but if I have to, but only before I end. Oh, <laughs> job. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> yep. So, um, I don't want to thank you 
to do wings and dish. Of course, thank you for having me. Yep. And you can watch me this every Wednesday at 8 30. Yep, on ABC. On ABC. <laughs> bye. Thank you, bye. <laughs> and, um,